Hallelujah. You're welcome to another Pinon Global Day of Fasting and Prayers. Every Thursday, all members of Prayer Network for Universal Revival all over the world, God has graciously granted us permission to approach Him in prayer on Thursday. Thursday for us is a holy day. It's a day that we are sure that God will listen to us. It doesn't mean He doesn't listen to any to us any other days, but it's about covenant day. It's a day we find God. It's a day we meet with our God. And I want to tell you that you do yourself a whole lot of good if you yield to this business of prayer. I always tell you that prayer is the opportunity that God has given to you to say something about your life when you are called to pray, especially in the moment of prayer. If you don't pray, you are asking that whatever others have said about you should stand. That is a bad decision because every other person will say things for their own interest. Prayer is the privilege God has given to you to say something about yourself. Today, we are dealing with a very important issue. It doesn't mean there are days only deal with important issues. But we are dealing with the power of praying for one another. We need to understand the power of our heart attitude when we are worshipping our God. Our God is a self, self, selfless God. Our God is a God of love. And Bible said, because he loved the world, I always tell you, he loves everybody. He gave his only begotten son that if we believe in him, not that he God will get better, but that we will not perish. So when we are relating with God and we are dealing with God, we should understand the kind of God we are serving and we should understand the principles that bring us to this God. If we violate the principles of our relationship with God, we should not think that God will change because of us. Every institution, every kingdom has rules, regulations, and tests of admission in this kingdom. The rules and tests of admission is what we we'll call the cross. If you look at the cross, there's a vertical line, there's a horizontal line. The horizontal line stands for relationship with your fellow men, people on earth. And the vertical line stands for relationship with God. And we, we Christians, we respect the cross a lot as a symbol of the place where the Lord Jesus Christ died. So if you have only a vertical relationship with God and you don't have a relationship with ordinary men, it's just a selfish single stick and you are not going to be balanced. And if all your relationship with are with men and you don't care what God says, then you are a minus. So the perfect standing you can have with God and you exist as a Christian is to have a good relationship with men, a good relationship with God. And these things are more powerful when we bring them to the place of prayer. When we come to the place of prayer, we are asking God to bless us. We are asking to hear from God. We are asking God for direction. And if we are asking such from God, it is very important that we position ourselves in such a way that our God will answer our prayer. Today we take our reading from first uh, from the book of James, chapter five, from verse thirteen up to verse sixteen, and I will read from here. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. So, like I always tell you, the greater your trouble, greater your need for prayer. Greater your trouble, greater your challenges. You don't say, oh, my troubles are so many so that uh, I, I cannot pray today. If you have greater challenges of trouble, then you have greater need for prayer. Verse 14, it says, is anyone among you sick? The first one, he said trouble. He said, verse 14, he said, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil. In the name of the Lord. He said, is anyone among you sick? Now he's talking about this sickness. He said, we may need the attention of the leadership, authority of the body of Christ. Call them the elders. This letter was written to believers. 
was running to unbelievers. So unbelievers get sick. Believers also can get sick. And he says, our solution to this when Bible says by the stress we are healed, we invite the elders to pray with us. And that means the eldership of the church are anointed people. They carry God's presence. And so if you can hear me now, you occupy leadership in the church and you're not feeling anointed on you. It's a serious matter. But the Bible said here that when you come to people who are sick, you should minister to them in the name of the Lord. You can also anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And verse 15, it says, And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. It is not the oil that makes the sick person well. I tell people that olive oil or anointed oil does not give us anointing. We are the one, the true vessels of the Lord, in whom the Holy Spirit, we are the one that pass anointing to the oil. If you're the kind of person that looks at oil as a source of anointing for you, then something is wrong with you. If you are among those that go to mystic shops to go to buy oil, is something wrong with you. You are the one that carry the oil of God. Whether you pray over water, whether you pray over oil, whether you pray over some kerchief and you use it as a contact for prayer, it is the grace of God in your life that is transferred to those things. And that means that if in your personal life you have issues with God, if in your personal life your standing with God is not right or you're not carrying the anointing, unfortunately, you cannot transfer anointing to the oil. Even if the oil is anointed by contact with you, you can pollute the oil. You can draw line the power in the oil. We saw this kind of thing in 1 Samuel chapter 4, when the children of Israel were in a war front. And then when the first time, and the fifth time they defeated them, and they came back and they took the ark of God, and they shouted in the camp, Everybody was so excited that the ark of the God of Israel was going out to war. Even the Philistines were afraid because they know the record of the God of Israel. But the sad thing was that on that particular day, that the Philistines captured the ark of God from the Israelites. Because the bearers of the ark were not positioned to bear the ark. I am saying this in relation with uh, anointing with oil. And I'm saying that the elder himself should have a right standing with God. The person that is carrying the anointed oil needs to have oil in his life and have authority in his life. The, the ark of God that was captured in 1 Samuel chapter 4 went to the territory of the Philistines and wreaked havoc there. So the problem was not with the ark. The problem is with the bearer. So if you are an elder or a leader or a pastor in a church, your spiritual position is very, very important. He said, when you anoint the sick person with oil, it is the prayer offered in faith that makes the sick person well. Now, if you offer prayer in faith, that the prayer can make the sick person well, but the goes right to say, the Lord will raise them up the Lord will raise them up. You pray a prayer of faith as an elder in the church. And the prayer of faith has power to heal the person. But it is not the prayer of faith independently that does that. It is the Lord that acts in answer to prayer. I always tell you that prayer on its own does not have power to solve any problem. It is the Lord that raises the sick person from the place of sickness. And it goes on in that verse 15 to say, If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. That will now take us to verse 16, our central text for today's prayer. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We say here, the Bible said, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. We started by saying, dealing with the matter of sin in the midst of the people of God, 
people are no longer confident in opening up to talk about their spiritual challenges because most times when people come to talk about their challenges people address them as if they are so unclean talk to them as if something strange is happen has happened to them bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and they are justified freely through the atonement that is in the lord jesus christ that is roman 5 23 to 24 we all are sinners that the lord jesus christ rescued in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1, he said, We all were one time living in this realm of darkness, controlled by the God of this world. So when you are listening to me now, and there are issues of sin in your life, there are some sins you can deal with on your own. But there are sins you need to talk to a mature brother, talk to a mature sister, and talking to that person will help you to to pour out your heart. And now, if you are the mature person, brother or sister, that a brother comes to you and says, I have sinned. You need to position your heart very well because we all are standing by grace. You need to seek the Lord and know the right word. Bible says in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 that God can give you the word that soothes the weary so you can recover the brother. When you see a brother or a sister fall into sin, God has not appointed you as a judge to condemn the brother. I am not saying you should not call sin by his name. The best way to take care of a disease or a problem, the engineers will tell you, is to identify the problem. You need to call sin by name. You need to tell the brother or the sister how serious what he or she has done. But when you are doing this, you have to do this with, with mindset of telling the brother that even though you have come this far, telling the sister, even though you have sunk to this level, you need to come out of this. And you can also make the person understand, like what I pointed out earlier in 1 John chapter 2 from verse 1. He said, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. So the Bible is not giving us license to sin. Bible is not telling us because we are living a time of grace that we can go on living in sin. But it says, if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Verse 2, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The Lord Jesus Christ has paid the price of our sins. Now, there's a difference between living in sin intentionally, deliberately, yielding our life to the lifestyle of sin, because we know that nothing can happen to us. In this context, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, that if we deliberately keep on sinning, after we have received a knowledge of the truth, there is no other sacrifice left but the fearful judgment in hellfire. But as humans on this part of the world, was in a while our temper, was in a while our flesh, was in a while pressure for the world, something can happen to us that can bring us to the point where we sin. We should know that God knew ahead that we could come to this point. And so he made available the cleansing power in the blood of Jesus Christ, the sufficient atonement for our redemption. We should know that the power in the blood cleanses us of all unrighteousness. In 1 John 1 verse 9, he said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It means that God does not just forgive our sins. God forgives us since we confess. Bible says in Proverbs 28 verse 13, if we, 
who conceals his sin will not prosper, but he who confesses and renounces them shall find mercy. We should come to understand that God is not threatening us with hellfire by turning us to turn from sin. God is asking us to come out of sin because sin is wasting us. Sin is opening us off for destructive power of Satan and evil darkness. So God is telling you, come out because I love you. I provided a way for you to come out of it. And that way is the way of the blood of Jesus Christ. That is what God has done. And in this context, what you need to do is to accept God's forgiveness. And if a brother in our midst have sinned, most times what devil does is that when that brother sins, devil accuses the brother, guilty conscience sets in, and the brother is no longer able to have the courage and boldness that will enable him to move forward. For Bible says somewhere that the righteous is as bold as a lion, but the presence of sin paralyzes this dimension of boldness, and so the brother is no longer bold. And that is why Bible said that that brother can confess it to the other brother, to the other sister, and that sister can miss that brother, miss that to him, pray for him, and recover him through the power in the blood, and bring him to his righteous state again. Because Bible said the righteous died for the righteous, that we, through him, might become the righteous righteousness of God. After we have dealt with the same Bible said, we should also pray for one another. I can't, I want to tell you today that when most of our prayers are focused on self, we need to understand that this scripture, when it's talking about the powerful and effective prayer of a righteous person, it's talking about prayer we pray for one another. Praying for your brother, praying for your sister, praying for uh, the church of God, praying for the body of Christ, praying for the world we belong into, praying for our leaders, Bible says this kind of prayer is very, very powerful. On today, Pino Global Day of Fast and Prayer, we are called to take time and pray for somebody. Take time and pray for somebody. Take time and visit somebody in the hospital. Pray for the person. Some say, will I pray for somebody when I still have my own problem? Yes. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 20, verse 17, that Abraham's wife was still barren when he prayed for the household of Abimelech and the womb of the family, his family were opened up and they have children. Job was still, had not still recovered when he, he was asked to pray for his friends in, in Job chapter 42 for, for their forgiveness before God could restore him. When you are asked to pray or do anything in the name of the Lord, you should know it is not in your own power. It is in the grace that God has given to you. You are asked to do that in, in, on God's behalf. And when you do it, you believe it, there will be power through it. So I am sending you out today to go pray for somebody. Make sure you pray for somebody. Pray for your brother, pray for your sister. You can also pray for people from afar. That is what is called intercession. And I pray that the grace of God will rest upon you today, wherever you are, as you join this fast. That the anointing of God come to flow. That as the word of God says, pray for one another that you may be healed. That as you pray for people today, they will get healed. You will get healed. As you pray for their finances today, they will have financial breakthrough. You will have financial breakthrough. As you pray for their marriages today, they will have successful marriage. You will have successful marriage. Whatever you give to other people will return to you. I want to make you understand that I'm praying for you from here. And I'm trusting God that the anointing grace shall rest upon you as we fast and pray today. God bless you in in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, I pray for your children wherever they are. I pray for the healing power, the anointing power of prayer to rest upon every one of us today. I pray as they pray today, heaven will be opened. I pray that every person under any kind of pressure, any kind of bondage, will receive deliverance today. In Jesus' name we pray. I also pray for revelation upon their hearts, that as they seek you today, they shall hear you, O Lord. If 
anyone is asking questions, let there be an answer. If anyone is sick, let there be healing. If anyone needs deliverance, let there be deliverance. If anyone needs to open door, let there be breakthrough today. In Jesus, Lord, us and marvelous name we pray. Oh, Lord of our God, we pray that your angels will be active today to work for us, to wait war against the host of wickedness. And we take away every permission sin has given Satan and the host of wickedness in our life. In Jesus, Lord, us and marvelous name we pray. Amen. I know you know it's your brother, Ima Angel Mosu at pinganajia.org plus 234-80-3572-4526. Remain under this anointing in Jesus' name. Amen.